and welcome. Firstly, if you have not hit the subscribe button, please will you do this. I love to be able to engage with my subscribers and I love to know who you are. At the end of this video, there will be a small little subscribe button at the bottom left hand side of the screen, which will enable you to subscribe directly. Alternatively, in the writing part beneath the video, you will also be able to hit subscribe. Next to that subscribe button, there's a little bell. This allows you to be notified when YouTube releases one of my new videos. In this session, we are going to be talking about why triathletes, especially after lockdown, are more predisposed to shoulder injuries. Many of us that were forced into lockdown would have been a lot less active. We might have been able to get on a treadmill or an indoor trainer, maybe do some gym and strengthening, but most of us would have been a lot less active and especially would have spent a lot more time sitting on a couch watching TV. Couches naturally predispose you to a more drooped and slouched position, and this is what predisposes you to developing habitual, poor postures, which predispose you to shoulder injuries. These slouch postures often lead to a condition called upper cross syndrome. This syndrome is a muscular imbalance characterized by overactive and shortened pec muscles over here, and trap muscles over there. Coupled with that, you get lengthened and weakened deep neck stabilizers and scapular stabilizers. These stabilizers are what are responsible for holding your posture nice and upright, while the pecs and the traps generally pull you more into the slouch position. When these postures become a syndrome, it puts us at risk of developing shoulder injuries such as impingement or tendon problems. A bony process or prominence that lies just above your shoulder creates the upper edge of a tunnel where your rotator cuff muscles pass. When we develop bad postural habits such as slouching and it leads to upper cross syndrome, the space in that tunnel becomes significantly reduced and the rotator cuff muscles land up getting squashed or pinched. Certain overhead movements, like those we use in the freestyle stroke where our shoulder is always above shoulder height, also predispose to further compression of that joint space because of how our bones and our joints change according to movement. When you have a combination of poor posture and repetitive overhead movement, you are most at risk for developing shoulder impingement syndromes. This can be an incredibly painful and disabling condition as it not only affects your swim stroke, but it affects activities of daily living, such as putting on a t-shirt, brushing your hair, washing your hair. Simply taking anti-inflammatory, resting and hoping it will go away is not going to do the trick. The gold standard treatment for shoulder impingement is actually prevention. But if you failed at this, the next best treatment is rehabilitation. Rehabilitation exercises aim to restore normal movement and strengthen the weaken and lengthen muscles and help to stop the overactive muscles such as your pecs and traps from working so hard. One of the first tricks that amateur athletes learn when they start doing triathlons is that to save their legs for the latter part of the race such as the cycle and run leg where you're going to be needing your legs a lot is to use your, mostly your upper body for swimming. So you are letting your legs drag behind you while your arms are doing most of the work. Due to the nature of the freestyle stroke, your rotator cuff tendons and your bicep tendon do most of the work to achieve this overhead stroke. When they are not being assisted by the propulsion from the lower body, it places an added strain on those tendons which are already working hard in the repetitive overhead action of the freestyle stroke. This repeated strain causes a reaction in the tendon which causes the collagen fibers that make up your tendon to break down. This condition is known as a tendinopathy. Again, the best treatment approach for these conditions is rehabilitation, as well as removing the factors that cause the tendon overload in the beginning. While you rehabilitate your tendons, it would be worth resting from swimming, especially overhead repetitive movements. This means you can still get in the pool, but rather use a kickboard under your chest where you're holding your arms at your sides, put some fins on and try and strengthen your legs and work on your body roll during this time instead of continuously straining your shoulders with that repetitive overhead action. Using a swim coach to help you correct your technique, especially trying to get more of a body roll as opposed to more shoulder movement, 
will help to take some of the strain off your rotator cuff tendons. If you can use the rotation in your spine by rotating your body and rolling your body, you'll be able to achieve that much more movement in your shoulder without placing that strain on your shoulder tendons. And lastly, as we said, rehabilitation will be the main treatment approach for reversing these issues. You really need to focus on stabilizing your scapula as your shoulder is directly related to your scapula. What your scapula does, your shoulder does. So if your scapula is drooping, your shoulder is going to droop and that extra compression onto your rotator cuff tendons is going to be inevitable. If you can change the position of your scapula and improve the stability to hold it back, you will open up that space where your rotator cuff tendons are and you will stop those impingement symptoms that have been crippling you. I'm going to take you through a simple shoulder routine where I show you some mobility exercises that aims to keep all the directions of movements in your shoulder as well as some strengthening tips for your scapula and your rotator cuff muscles. If you are coming out of lockdown and you feel that you have weakened, these would be a really good set of exercises to do maybe four times a week before you get back to swimming. If you enjoy these exercises and you would like a progression on them, please feel free to leave a comment below and we can do another video working on the exercises that I've already given you. I will explain a little bit more about the role of each exercise as we go. I'm going to show you scap setting. Scap setting refers to setting your scapular bone, which is this shoulder bone at the back, in the optimal position for you to achieve optimal shoulder function. If you can't get your scap setting right, you're going to battle with a lot of these exercises and you're often going to battle with neck pain or shoulder pain because you're probably going to be using your upper traps far too much. Your lower fibers of your trapezius over here is what plays a big role in scapular stability and this is what this exercise aims to work on. This is a very basic scap set and before you go into the other exercises I want you to ensure that you can achieve this exercise. Then you're going to hold this activation and include it in all your other exercises before you get going. So you just want to have something basic to rest your forehead on. You're going to lie on your tummy with your forehead there and your arms and your sides. You want to move your shoulders back up and away from the ground into that position. You are not squeezing your shoulder blades together. You're not shrugging your shoulders up to your shoulder, up to your ears. You're simply opening your chest by drawing your shoulder blades back and away. And you're going to hold in this position. If you feel like you're getting this right, just lift your hands slightly and you can hold in that position. You should feel that working quite nicely down the center of your back if you are getting it right. This exercise is what we call humeral head stabilization. The ball of your shoulder joint is what we call your humeral head. And ideally for optimal shoulder function, you want that ball to sit in the middle of your shoulder. That's when you know that all your rotator cuff muscles and your deep shoulder stabilizers are doing their job in centralizing that ball in the middle of your joint. If you look at someone from the side, you might often see that they have quite a forward shoulder position like that. We want to try and get it back and away, similar to scap setting but on a lot smaller of a scale. It helps if you give a little bit of downwards traction on your arm first. And then you want to imagine the suction from here, pulling that ball up into your joint. You're honestly not going to be getting more than five millimeters of movement. So if you get a lot of movement, you're probably then doing a scap set more than centralizing your humeral head. It's more actually the mental imagery or imagining this happening to be able to activate the, the right muscles. So you're going to pull your shoulder down and suck it up into your joint. You'll notice as I do that how nicely it fixes my shoulder position as opposed to being there. The traction just gives an added cue and you're going to pull it slightly back. Like I said, not more than five millimeters and you're going to hold this position. You always want to try and think of this in the exercises that you're doing like you're sucking the ball of your shoulder joints up diagonally backwards. 
Try this, hold it for 10 seconds and repeat it 10 times. So this exercise is called shoulder flossing. It can be used as a really nice warm-up exercise and it aims to achieve the same goal as that humeral head stabilization exercise that I showed you earlier where you're trying to centralize the head of your humerus in your joint. So all you're going to need is one of these, it's a power band, a little bit thicker than a normal TheraBand. If a TheraBand is all you have, that will work perfectly too. You're going to attach it to something that's about shoulder height. You're going to step forward so that you get a bit of resistance on it. And you're going to find where the ball of your shoulder joint is sitting. So mine's sitting about there. You're going to place the band around that. And you just want to step forward so that you've got a nice resistance on this band on your shoulder. You're going to place your shoulder to 90 degrees and you're just going to rotate in and out while that band is drawing the humeral head back in your shoulder joint. Just make sure that you keep it central. If it's slipping, you can just hold it there. And you just do a few repetitions of this. The other exercise you can do to achieve the same thing with a different shoulder movement is just forward flexion right up to the ceiling and back down. Always in these exercises, keeping your core nice and tight. Your shoulders in a scap set position. You also might feel a fair amount of clicking in your shoulder as you do this. This is just because the band is pulling the head of your humerus into a different position to what your shoulder usually moves in. You should find that by the end of this exercise you're actually achieving a lot more overhead range than you were in the beginning. And this is why it's a nice warm-up exercise before you're swimming. This is an exercise to strengthen your lateral rotator cuff, which is in that area over there. All you're going to need for this is a TheraBand. You're going to hold it between your hands, rotate it out. Remember your scap set position, so that position, not like that. You want to get your shoulders back, stabilizing from your scapula. You're going to keep your elbows at your sides the whole time and you're going to rotate your one arm out and hold for two seconds before releasing. You don't want this hand on your left hand side to move, so as you move that you don't want them to follow. You're going to stabilize with your other hand while your other arm moves to the side and back. And you're going to repeat ten of these on one side, holding for two seconds at the end and back and then you're going to do it on the other side. 10 times, holding for 2 seconds, and back. You should feel a really nice burn in this area towards the end of the exercise, then you know you're targeting the right muscle group. This exercise is a little bit of a progression of the no money exercise, that one that we demonstrated just now. For this one you'll need the added addition of a foam roller. The wider the foam roller, the better. You get some that are about half the size. For this exercise, it makes it a little bit more difficult if they're shorter, so a nice long one will be really good. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your hands into the same position as they were for the last exercise in that position. You're going to place the roller on the wall in front of you. Hands shoulder width apart on the roller. You want to make sure that your wrists are always wider than your elbows. Tuck your glutes in, activate your core, keep pulling the band and you're going to roll right at the wall, pushing your elbows into the roller and slowly lower it down. Again, you don't want to squeeze your shoulders up towards your neck, you want to get into a nice scap set position without arching your back and roll your hands up. Don't let that happen, you pull it out to activate your rotator cuff and slowly lower it down. The 
this exercise is another really good scapular stabilization exercise. Really target your traps, the upper, middle, and lower fibers of your trapezius. You're going to need a Pilates ball for this. Alternatively, you can do it over a bench um, or over the side of your bed, but this gives the added benefit of a bit of stability. You're going to place it just under your chest. Okay, you're going to place your body nice and straight, squeeze your glutes, toes are going to be flexed. If you find that you slip or you're battling to get stability, prop yourself up against the wall so that your feet are pushing against the wall. We're going to start with what we call eight. So you're making an A-frame shape by lifting your hands to there. In this position, I want you to focus on getting your nice deep neck flexion. So a chin tuck as though you're making a double chin. And you want to get your scap set that we spoke about earlier. You're going to tilt your thumbs up to the ceiling, keeping those two postures, activating your core and squeezing your glutes. And you're going to lift your shoulders up in an A shape. Hold and back down. Maintain your deep neck flexion and your scap set and lift up. Hold for two seconds and down. Then we're going to do another one called a T. So you're just going to move your shoulders forward, same thing. Activate, deep neck flexion, thumbs up, and you're going to lift up to the side. You should feel this working between your shoulder blades at this point. Make sure you're not shrugging your shoulders up towards your ears. Keep your nice cap set all the way through the movement. If you're back in to keep your scap set, reset everything in between. Then we're going to take you on to the most difficult one of these, which are your Y's. This forces your lower fibers of your trapezius to work really hard, and often these are the weakest muscle fibers of your traps. So you're going to scap set, get your deep neck flexion, thumbs up to the ceiling, and lift your shoulders up. Same thing, you want to hold for about two seconds at the top before coming down. If you can repeat 10 repetitions of each of these, your A's, T's and your Y's, and repeat this three times, you'll find you've had a really good workout in this shoulder blade area. This exercise is called a scapular push-up. You're going to get into a four-point position on your hands and knees. Your shoulders should be, your hands should be directly underneath your shoulders and, and your knees directly beneath your hips. Okay, you want to make sure that you find your neutral lumbar spine, which just means that your back is not too arched, it's not too rounded, you're going to get it halfway in between. What you're going to do is imagine there's a really sharp object poking you at your chest and you want to round out away from that object. Then you want to draw your shoulder blades back so you're squeezing them together and then ride your ribcage right up and out, squeeze back, all the while picturing that there's a diagonal line between your hands or a line just running between your hands that you're trying to tear apart with your palms. This just further engages your lats while you mobilize your scapula around your ribcage. Okay, it's not a thoracic spine flexion and extension exercise. Your thoracic spine and your lumbar spine stay stable and you're only moving your scapula around your ribcage. This works your serratus anterior muscle over here and this is a very important muscle for stability for your scapula and is really good for swimmers. Now I'm going to show you a really nice stretch for your lats. Very simple, everyone knows it. Probably not done enough and really helps us to maintain that overhead reach for our freestyle stroke. So I want you to get onto your knees, stretch your hands right out in front of you and try and touch your bum onto your heels. Okay, you're going to hold this position for 30 seconds. 
You should feel it stretching along that area right down to your lumbar spine. To bias it to one side or another, if you want to do it to stretch your left lat, you move your right arm out to the side and you put your left arm on top and lean into your left shoulder to try and get that stretch. If you want to bias it to your right lat, you move your left hand to the left and your right hand on top and you lean into your right shoulder. As I say, for any passive stretch, you want to hold this for 30 seconds and you're going to do it three times on each side, three times a day to get the best benefit. This is a nice stretch for your pectoralis major muscle group. In other words, your pecs, which is over here. You're going to face a wall at a 45 degree angle, place the same arm on that wall to about shoulder height, place the same leg forward and you're going to rotate into that shoulder and open out your other shoulder and you should get a really nice stretch right across your shoulder and your chest. You should be holding this for about 30 seconds, have a 5 second break in between and repeat it 3 sides on each side for it to be effective. If I show you this from another angle, right hand on the wall, right foot forward and you're going to lean into your right shoulder. If you want to add a little bit more of a bicep stretch into that along with a peg stretch, you can do that with an open hand, hand flat on the wall and straight arm and you rotate the same direction. This just pulls a little bit more down into your biceps and your forearm. This exercise is called a sleeper stretch and it aims to stretch out your posterior capsule of your shoulder which runs along there. This is often what causes your shoulder joint to be pushed forward or the head of your humerus to be pushed forward in your joint. You're going to lie on the side of the shoulder you want to stretch, have a little pillow, place your arm at 90 degrees and you're going to pull your shoulder down until you feel a gentle stretch at the back of your arm and you're going to hold that for 30 seconds. Make sure that you're not pulling your arm right forward. You want to kind of be lying just above your arm and pulling down. It's quite an uncomfortable stretch. It's not a normal muscular stretch. It's very pulling and burny almost behind your shoulder. That's a capsular stretch. It's meant to feel like that. If you build this into your routine, you'll find you get quite a lot more shoulder mobility. Thank you for joining us in this video. I hope these tips were useful to you and I hope that you'll build these exercises into your swimming routine as a bit of prehabilitation for your shoulders. Our next video is going to address neck pain in triathletes, which often comes as a result of the position on our bikes. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button too. Thank you and see you soon.